Hey, it's Josiah. So today I saw a pretty fun problem on Twitter and I wanted to try taking a stab at it using Extender and Rust and R all together. Problem is that the senior spreadsheet engineer has a bunch of missing values in a data frame and they're replacing the NA values using a UUID. Maybe this is a great place for Rust to come in. So what I'm going to do is spend like 15, 20 minutes uh, exploring this Rust crate UUID and see if we can make an R package that will create universally unique identifiers. And we're going to create a new package. I'll call it UU because UUID is taken. Now we're inside of our studio and before I can do anything else, I need to turn this R package into a Rust based R package. So I'm going to use R extender use extender. This is going to create the scaffolding that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD into source and rust. Then I'm going to open VS code from there. Boom. So now that VS code is open, now I'm going to add these features to our uh, cargo.toml. I'm going to add the V7, which I know is needed as well. So what I'll do is hop in here, say UID equals version, in whatever, then what features equals before V7 fast. So let's save this, open up our source. Let's delete the hello world. We don't need that. I'm going to leave this here as a good reminder. Now let's run our first cargo check. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. The first thing I'm going to do is just create a new function. We're going to say new and this function is going to return a string. So let's actually add the UUID, UUID struct here and we'll call the UUID new v4 method and then what was the method in here let's call this let uuid equals this let's see what the rust analyzer says expected string found nothing ah there we go to string Great, so now this is our first function and let's add this as an export to extender. I'll say fn new v4. And now what we need to do is we need to make this function available to R. So we need to head over to our studio and in a new file, we'll run R command B to build the package. Then we're gonna need to run R extender document. So this is going to generate the wrapper functions that we need to call the new Rust functions. Then we'll have uh, DevTools load all, and this is going to load the package for us. So let's see if new v4 is available to us. Boom, there we go. We have a new UUID for the version 4. So let's try making this make more of them. So let's think about um, having a parameter here called n which is an I32. This is gonna be the number of UUIDs to generate. And then the wrapper struct for a character vector and extender is called the strings. So we're gonna use this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast N into a U size. So I'm gonna say let N as U size. And this is gonna enable us to create a range. So we're gonna say from zero to N, let range equals zero to N. And then we're gonna say range dot into iter. So we're gonna iterate through this range and we're gonna map a function. And we're gonna say I, and for each one of these we'll do you, we'll have UU, UUID colon colon new V4. And we're gonna cast it as hyphenated and then we're gonna cast it as a string. So this is gonna create a string of this uh, UUID for each one of these elements. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna collect this into strings. And that alone should be sufficient. So since we've added a new argument here, we need to redocument the function. So first we build it, we document it, we load it. Argument n is missing. So let's say 10. Boom, we have 10, let's do 100. Awesome. Um, now let's just double check that they're all unique. Yep, that looks good to me. And uh, let's compare this speed-wise to the UUID package. So UUID 
UUID generate. Um, we're going to say use.time equals false. And we're going to say n equals 100. And the output is going to be a string. Now we'll say uwu is equal to this. And when we do the benchmark, they're totally random, right? So these names are not actually going to, the results aren't going to match. So what we're going to say is check equals false. We'll save this to an object called BM. And let's see how long that took. Awesome. So uwu ran this in 50 nanoseconds, whereas uwu ID did the, or sorry, <laughs> whereas UUID took 1.19 milliseconds. And if we look at this, the iterations per second is just insane. The memory allocation is the same, which is great, I guess, which means UUID is actually doing a fine job with memory allocation, but it's pretty slow. So um, just out of curiosity, if we take relative equals true, we can get a relative measure. So we can say that uwu is 23 times faster than UUID, and that's pretty sweet. Let's see how this scales though. So let's say n equals 1000. Put that there, n equals n, and run all that. Okay, that is 20 times faster. Let's do 10,000. There we go, 25 times faster. Now 100,000. Still 23 times faster. That's, that's significant, you know? Yeah. Now let's just do a million, because we're feeling crazy. That finally executed. Here, uh, uwu was only 10 times faster, which is interesting. It was a, somewhat of a slowdown. But the, memory but the memory allocation is actually a lot better. It's three times. Yeah, the memory allocation shows us that it's actually about three times more efficient for memory. So that's, that's pretty neat. Let's, let's take this as an opportunity to go and create some new V7 ones. So the process seems pretty simple, right? So let's just copy and paste this. Boom, and we'll say new v7, and then we'll do new v7. Actually, we gotta do now v7 because this requires a timestamp, but the now v7 method will take that timestamp for us. Add the extender name, pass this into fn new v7. We're gonna document it, load all. You'll see that the pattern's pretty much the same all the time. So new v7. And we'll do 10 of them. They are all unique, right? So they have similar prefixes, but then they get different around here. So let's do uh, UUID, UU, whoop, UUID generate use.time equals true. 10, perfect. So let's, let's try benchmarking these things again. Let's copy this. And let's just start with a thousand here. Oh, that's interesting. Here, UUID is actually faster. Crank it up. Wow, okay. Let's turn relative off. That's a significant slowdown. Let's check this one again. Maybe it was a bad build. That's super interesting. So I think that's a suggestion that we can make right away is that if you want to keep using this package, just use time. It's faster. <laughs> so one of the main issues that Senior Spreadsheet Engineer pointed out was that the actual problem is really memory consumption. So I wonder if we can try something here where we modify a character vector in place. Um, we, there's, some, there's some back doors in extender that we can use to modify things by reference. I'm gonna say impute UU, UUID. And I'm gonna have this take a, a single argument and it's gonna be strings. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say let X or mute x equals x. And in extender, at least right now, there's no way to pass in mutable versions of an R object because R has this principle of copy on write or clone on write, I think, which is once you modify something, you duplicate it because we don't wanna ever actually accidentally mess something up or anything like that, but that can lead to a little bit of memory bloat. So what I'm saying here is I'm gonna take in this character vector, but I'm actually gonna modify it in place, which means that if I do anything to this character vector that you passed in after you ran that function, that's gonna persist. That character vector is not gonna be the same it was after 
I pass it in. So I don't actually need to return any results here because the thing that you pass in is gonna be modified. And this is really dangerous and it should only be done in certain cases. So just be aware of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go x into iter dot map xi. So the idea here is if this character string or if it, if there's an element in here that is an na value what we'll do is we'll create a uuid and just fill it in what well, we're, we're not actually going to use an iterator here in this case a for loop makes more sense or i in zero through x dot len what we're going to say is x dot all right let x i equals x I, if xi is na, we'll say x dot set elt i uuid new v4, because that one was really fast. We'll call it hyphenated to string. Actually, let's pull this out here. Let uuid equal, boom our string from UUID. And this should set the, what's gonna happen here is if this element is NA, we're gonna set that NA value to be that new UUID that we just generated. Otherwise, it's just gonna run. So let's see how this actually works. Maybe I, I did it wrong or something like that, but let's give it a shot fn impute uuid we ran into a compilation error build okay so instead of actually extracting the element i'm now using a reference to it but the function should be the same now impute uuid okay so let's do something like this let's call x c a n a and c so once we use this impute uuid function on this x variable that na should be gone so if I run this X, nothing is printed out because we're modifying it in place. But now when I print this out, I have a UUID. So that's interesting. We've modified this entirely in place. So I'm gonna steal some code from the example I shared on Twitter, and I'm gonna create just some fake data. Data table's been working with one, only one thread on my machine. That's so funny. So now I have this data frame here, and I wanna impute all of these NA values. So what we'll do is we'll say for call in DF, this is gonna iterate through our data frame. We're gonna do impute UUID call. And this theoretically should fill in all of those values. And we're gonna wrap this in system.time just to see how long this takes. Ha, <laughs> okay. Wow, that's insane. We just, that's insane. That's actually insane. Less than one second and one, two, three, what's one million, that's 10 million values we just iterated through and imputed within a second. That's nuts, let's do it again. Let's do, let's make half of the data missing. This is taking longer because it's more missing values six seconds wow so the speed of this is going to depend on how many missing values there are because if there's more missing values we need to generate more uuids but this is a pretty interesting use case where modifying data in place would actually be pretty useful um i'll clean up this code and, and put it on github but i think this is going to be the extent of what i'm going to go over today hope that's been helpful